I'll trim it down. Good morning. Welcome to story time. This morning, we are going to start off with a little finger play. So, ready? Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Place them in your lap. All right, good job. This morning, I will be reading, Frankly, I'd Rather Spin Myself a New Name. The story of Rumpelstiltskin as told by Rumpelstiltskin by Jessica Gunderson, illustrated by Jana Bach. My name is Rumpelstiltskin. I know, I know, horrible name, isn't it? Impossible to spell. I'm not sure what my mother was thinking when she gave it to me. Thankfully, she always called me Al. So did everyone else. I thought I could keep my real name a secret forever. Boy, was I wrong. Let me start at the beginning. I'm a traveling gold spinner. I go door to door all around the kingdom and spin straw into gold. It's not that hard, really. All it takes is a bit of science and a lot of practice. People pay me oodles of cash. Everyone loves gold. One day, as I was passing by the king's castle, I heard someone crying. I poked my head through an open window. Inside, on a pile of straw, sat a young maiden. What's wrong, I asked. The king ordered me to spin this straw to gold, she wailed. If I don't, I'll die. You're in luck, I said. I know how, but my skill has a price. I, I could pay you with my, my necklace, the maiden said. I would have rather had cash, but I accepted. While I worked, the maiden told me a long story about her father. He was poor and wanted to look important, so he told the king his daughter could turn straw into gold. She can't. When I finished spinning, the maiden gave me her necklace, and away I went. The next day, I heard sobbing again. It was the same maiden. This time, however, she was in a much bigger straw-filled room. The king was ever so pleased with the gold, she said. But now he wants even more, and if I don't spin all this... Okay, okay, I said. What will you give me if I help you? I can pay you with my ring, she said. So I spun the straw into gold, took the ring, and went home. The following afternoon, I heard the maiden weeping again. She sat in an enormous room, packed wall to wall, floor to ceiling with straw. The king would marry her, she explained, if she spun all the straw into gold. I beg you to help me, dear sir, she said. I want to be queen, but I have nothing left to give you. She whines a lot. That's when I got to thinking. I'd always wanted kids, but I didn't have a girlfriend or a wife. I traveled too much. Plus, I'd have to put my real name on a marriage license, and I didn't want to do that. <laughs> you can pay me later, I told the maiden. How about your firstborn son? Yes, of course, I'll give you anything, she said. I spun every last bit of straw in that room into gold. Then I went back to my cottage and thought about what a great dad I'd be someday. <laughs> Life went on. I traveled far and wide, spinning straw until my fingers hurt. About a year later, I returned home. Newspapers had piled up on my doorstep. Right on top was a picture of the maiden, now the queen, holding a super cute baby. Woohoo! I cried. Time to collect my payment. The queen looked surprised to see me. What was your name again? She asked. I ignored the question and asked for the baby. Certainly not, she said. I reminded her of her promise, but she just hugged the baby tightly and babbled on about feeding times and teething pains and how she loved her boy and couldn't give him up, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Fine, I said. Guess my real name in three days and you can keep your baby. I'll warn you, it's very unusual. I've got it, the queen told me the next day. Your name is Casper. I shook my head. Melchior? Nope. Balthazar, Ichabod, Ulysses. Uh-uh, I said. The second day she guessed sheepshank. Ribs of beef? Like a lamb? <laughs> no, I said. Not even close. Tomorrow's your last chance. That night, I danced with glee. The queen would never guess my name. I even sang a little song. Ho, 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 only I know. Hear my laugh. See my grin. My name is Rumpelstiltskin. On the third day, the queen asked, is your name Puffernut? Lumpaglop. Smear and shear? Lolly poodle. Very creative, I told her, but no. She smiled. Is it rumple stilt skin? My jaw dropped. It's not possible. How in the world did you ever? 
What are you, a mind reader? She grinned and cuddled her baby. What a bummer. What about the toys I'd bought? The nursery I'd painted. I stamped my foot hard and it went right through the floor. When I tried to pull it out, my leg came off. It came off! <laughs> I did learn a couple important lessons from my adventure. Get paid right away and take only cash. The worst part? Now everyone calls me Rumpled Stiltskin instead of Al. My secret's out and I can't fit my name on my business cards. Although I guess it's still better to be called Rumpled Stiltskin than Lolly Poodle, right? <laughs> the end. Next up, we have Lisa. Morning, everyone. So today I'm going to read for you There Was an Old Dragon Who Swallowed a Knight by Penny Parker Klosterman and Ben Mantle. So, there was an old dragon who swallowed a knight. So, uh-oh. Danger! This way! And he's going. Oh, boy. Danger! Beware of dragon. Dragon! There was an old dragon who swallowed a knight. I don't know why he swallowed the knight. <laughs> it's not polite! Turn around now! Oh, no, too late. There was an old dragon who swallowed a steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. Oh, how the dragon wished it would stop that clippity 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 clop. He swallowed the steed right after the knight. I don't know why he swallowed the knight. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a squire who hollered, that's it, when the dragon breathed fire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. He swallowed the steed right after the knight. I don't know why he swallowed the knight. It's not polite. <sighs> so there was an old dragon who swallowed a cook, a savory cook and his recipe book. He swallowed the cook to fatten the squire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. He swallowed the steed right after the knight. I don't know why he swallowed the knight. Clippity, 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 clop. It's not polite. Ah, there was an old dragon who swallowed a lady. It seems quite shady that he'd swallow a lady. He swallowed the lady to rule the cook. He swallowed the cook to fatten the squire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at, at a terrible speed. Clippity, 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 clop. He swallowed the steed right after the knight. I don't know why he swallowed the knight. It's not polite. Oh my, oh my goodness. There was an old dragon who swallowed a castle. Swallowed it down to the last golden tassel. Run away, ah! He swallowed the castle to hold the lady. He swallowed the lady to rule the cook. He swallowed the cook to fatten the squire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. Clippity, 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 clop. He swallowed the steed right after the knight. I don't know why he swallowed the knight. It's not polite. Uh, there was an old dragon who swallowed a moat, guzzled and gulped it down, right down his throat. Uh-oh. Do you see the alligators? Alligators and all. Ooh. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. With all of that water, he started to bloat. And that's when the dragon roared, and I quote, Okay, enough. I've had enough. More than enough of the swallowing stuff. Maybe I've been a tad impolite. Perchance I should have only swallowed the knight. So he burped out the moat that had caused him to bloat. He burped out the castle along with the tassel. He burped out the lady who found that quite shady. He burped out the cook and his recipe book. He burped out the squire, now blackened with fire. <laughs> then, with all of the power that he could amass, the dragon burped out the last billow of gas. Burp! And with terrible speed, he burped out the steed. Clippity, 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 clop, clippity, 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 stop! <sighs> there was an old dragon who swallowed a knight. <sighs> Just right. 
Good night. The end. All right. Well, next we have Chelsea. Okay, let's take a little break and sing a song. <clears throat> Get your hands ready. There were five in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. There were four in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. There were three in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. There were two in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. There was one in the bed and the little one said, ah, good night. <laughs> <clears throat> My story today is called The Giant Jumperee. It is by Julia Donaldson and illustrated by Helen Oxenbury. Rabbit was hopping home one day when he heard a loud voice coming from inside his burrow. I'm the giant jumperee and I'm scary as can be. Uh oh. Help, help, cried Rabbit. What's the matter, Rabbit? asked Cat. There's a giant jumperee in my burrow, said Rabbit. Don't worry, said Cat. I'll slink inside and pounce on him. So Cat sunk up to the burrow, but just as she was about to slink inside, she heard a loud voice. I'm the giant jumperee and I'll squash you like a flea. Help, help, meowed Cat. What's the matter, Cat, asked Bear. There's a giant jumperee in Rabbit's burrow, said Cat. Don't worry, said Bear. I'll put my big furry paw inside and knock him down. So, Bear swaggered up to the burrow, but just as he put his big furry paw inside, he heard a loud voice. I'm the giant jumperee, and I'll sting you like a bee. Mm. Help, help, bellowed Bear. What's the matter, Bear? asked Elephant. There's a giant jumperee in Rabbit's burrow, said Bear. Oh, don't worry, said Elephant. I'll wrap my trunk around him and toss him away. <clears throat> so... Elephant stomped up to the burrow, but just as he put his long gray trunk inside, he heard a loud voice. I'm the giant jumperee, and I'm taller than a tree. Uh -oh. Help, help, trumpeted Elephant. What's the matter, Elephant? asked Mama Frog. There's a giant jumperee in Rabbit's burrow, said Elephant. Oh, don't worry, said Mama Frog. I'll tell him to come out. No, no, don't do that, said all the other animals. He's as scary as can be, said Rabbit. He could squash you like a flea, said Cat. He could sting you like a bee, said Bear. And he's taller than a tree, said Elephant. But Mama Frog took no notice of them. She jumped up to the burrow. I'm the giant jumperee and you're terrified of me, came the loud voice. The other animals backed away, but Mama Frog wasn't scared. Come on out, giant jumperee, she said. You're the one we want to see, so I'm counting up to three. One, two, three. And out jumped Baby Frog. <laughs> Hello, Mama. I'm the giant jumperee. 
and you're coming home for tea, said Mom the Frog. <laughs> there they go. There they all go. The end. <clears throat> and next we have Angel. Thanks, Chelsea. I like that story. All right, our next story is called Frog on a Log by Kess Gray and Jim Field. Are you guys good at rhyming? Because this is a rhyming book. Hey, frog, sit on a log, said the cat. But I don't want to sit on a log, said the frog. Logs are all hard and uncomfortable. And, and they give you splinters, ouch. I don't care, said the cat. You're a frog and you must sit on a log. Can't I sit on the mat, asked the frog. <laughs> Only cats sit on mats, said the cat. Um, well, what about a chair, said the frog. I wouldn't mind sitting on a chair. Hairs sit on chairs said the cat. You can only sit on something that you rhyme with. Oh, I get it, all right. Perhaps I could sit on a stool? Mules sit on stools, said the cat. What about a sofa, said the frog. I could stretch right out on a sofa. Gophers sit on sofas, said the cat. It's very simple, really. Cats sit on mats, hares sit on chairs, mules sit on stools, gophers sit on sofas, and frogs sit on logs. Well, what do lions sit on? asked the frog. Lions sit on irons, said the cat. Ouch, said the frog. Well, what do parrots sit on? Parrots sit on carrots, said the cat. Lions sit on irons and parrots sit on carrots. That doesn't sound very comfortable, said the frog. It's not about being comfortable, said the cat. It's about doing the right thing. Well, what do foxes sit on, asked the frog. Foxes sit on boxes, said the cat. Foxes sit on boxes and fleas Sit on peas. What do goats sit on? Asked the frog. Goats sit on coats, said the cat. Goats sit on coats, cows sit on plows, and storks, they sit on forks. Ooh. What do gorillas sit on? Asked frog. Gorillas sit on pillars, said the cat. Gorillas sit on pillars, rats sit on hats, weasels sit on easels, and moles sit on poles. Well, then what do seals sit on? Asked the frog. Oh, don't you know anything? Said the cat. Seals sit on wheels. Doves sit on gloves. Uh, lizards sit on wizards. And apes sit on grapes. What about puffins? Asked the frog. Puffins sit on muffins, said the cat. Puffins sit on muffins, snakes sit on cakes, and owls sit on towels. Gibbons sit on ribbons, lambs sit on jams, and bees sit on keys. Well, I never knew that, said the frog. Well, you do now, said the cat. Well, hey, what do dogs sit on, asked the frog. I was hoping you wouldn't ask that, said the cat. What do you think frogs, uh, dogs sit on? <laughs> Help! <laughs> yeah, dogs sit on frogs. Thank you, now it's time for Twyla! <laughs> Alrighty, so the book I'm gonna share today is called Animals Should Definitely Not Wear Clothing, by, written by Judy Barrett and illustrated by Rod Barrett. Animals should definitely not wear clothing. 
because it would be disastrous for a porcupine. I mean, his quills would poke holes in all the clothing. And because a camel might wear it in the wrong places. He's got hats on his humps. I thought hats were for heads. Because a snake would lose it. What use does a snake have? He doesn't have any legs. Why would he want pants? Because a mouse could get lost in it. Well, there's a hat, but where's the mouse? Oh, there's little bitty feet down here. That must be the mouse. Oh, there's their tail. Yeah. Because a sheep might find it terribly hot. <laughs> Can you imagine a sheep with a sweater on? Because it could be very messy for a pig. Look at all that slop all over and mud all over his shirt. Because it might make life hard for a hen. She's trying to lay an egg, but it won't come out because her pants are holding it back. Because a kangaroo would find it quite unnecessary. What does a kangaroo need with another pocket? Because she's already got a pocket. Hmm. And because a giraffe might look sort of silly. I mean, he's, he's got a suit on, but it takes him one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ties to make up for his neck. Because a billy goat would eat it for lunch. Because they'll eat everything. And because it would always be wet for a walrus. <laughs> and because a moose could never manage. Look, he's trying to put a pair of pants on, but his suspenders are all caught up in his antlers. And because a possums might wear it upside down by mistake. So there's the legs, and, but here's his head. His head's burying the legs. That is just silly. And most of all, because it might be very embarrassing. What would you feel like if an elephant had the same dress on as you had? That would be silly. All right, so you ready for our goodbye song? I was waiting for you. Oh, come on. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. Clap, clap, clap your hands. Clap your hands together. Clap, clap, clap your hands. Clap your hands together. Stop, stop, stop your feet. Stop your feet together. Stop, stop, stop your feet. Stop your feet together. Wave, wave, wave goodbye. Wave goodbye together. Wave, wave, wave goodbye. We're goodbye together.